when the world needed me, I've returned. Spider-Man fans, it is a bittersweet day because while we finally got an update on Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4 letting us know who's directing this movie, today is also the same day James Earl Jones has passed away. And well, I just feel weird celebrating with that news literally just happening moments ago. So, R.I.P. legend. Now let's talk Spider-Man. So I'm gonna be diving into the details of who has been revealed to be the director for Spider-Man 4, whether we're excited about this, whether they could have done something better, what are we expecting to see with this fourth movie now that we know who's behind the director chair? But it's not just gonna be about my opinion, I need to hear from you guys. Are you finally happy the mystery is over? Are you excited for Spider-Man 4? Start your guesses now on who you even think the villain is going to be for the movie. When it's finally announced, I'll pick your comment and say, they got it. They got it. But okay, without further ado, yes, the set is naked, all right. This whole week, I am spookifying it because we are finally entering the spooky mama season. Sorry, all right. I know it must look weird. Let me see if this helps. There we go. Now it's like the set isn't even gone and you can do whatever you'd like with me here. Oh, I'm a roller coaster. I'm on a roller coaster. Whoa. Oh, scuba diving. I'm scuba diving. Scuba diving. I'm in trouble. But okay, it got revealed moments ago by The Hollywood Reporter that Daniel Destin Crenton will be the director for Spider-Man 4. Now, if that name is not familiar to you, he is the person who directed Marvel's Shang-Chi. One of the only solo introductory characters throughout Phase 4 and 5 that people were actually behind post-Endgame. We know ever since Endgame, people have been yelling the MCU's fallen off, things aren't going well, heck, even Deadpool mentioned it in his recent movie. But in the midst of all this, I think one movie really gave people a pleasant smile on their face, and that was Shang-Chi. So for me personally, this is a director choice I'm extremely happy with, and I'm surprised we didn't see this coming before, because for months and what feels like years, we have been trying to guess who is directing Spider-Man 4, and this guy was right under our noses the entire time. I say that because at one point he was scheduled to direct Avengers Kang Dynasty back when Kang was still the main focus villain of the MCU and that movie was called Kang Dynasty. But obviously we now know they've removed that title and have gone with Avengers Doomsday and brought back the Russo brothers for both Doomsday and Secret Wars. And that seemed kind of a bummer, man, because can you imagine landing the job of directing an Avengers movie and then... Fagoli just swipes it out under you and hands you a Spider-Man movie? I honestly don't think that's a downgrade. I'd much prefer a Spider-Man movie than an Avenger movie. feel like there's a little less pressure. Just, just a little. Still a lot of pressure though. But honestly, I was fearing the day they'd announce a director and this is not one I'm really all that scared about because like I said, I like Shang-Chi. One of the things I liked most about it was the fight choreography and the way it was directed. Like there were some really cool hand-to-hand -hand fight scenes in there and that's the kind of stuff I've been dying to see thrown into Tom Holland's Spider-Man movies. I have mentioned, I am no longer a John Watts hater. I respect and love the man. We will miss you, John Watts. And it's not just because he was one of the only celebrities really nice to me at the Deadpool and Wolverine premiere. Okay, maybe that was a really big reason because of it. But joking aside, yes, John Watts for sure had some outstanding moments throughout his Spider-Man trilogy. Like, there are serious times within Homecoming, Far From Home, and No Way Home where you really see Wow, this is peak Tom Holland Spider-Man, and then there's a bunch of in-between stuff that just doesn't completely work for me, and sometimes it holds me back from loving the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies as much as I do the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield films. One of those key things was sometimes the fight and action scenes just didn't really feel like it had that much personality attached to it. We know the swinging scenes were sometimes very much lacking, and well, that's something I don't think I'm gonna have to worry about with this director. I mean, even even putting aside the fight choreography and those action sequences, Shang-Chi was also a movie that had some heart to it. It wasn't really a movie that made me cry, but it did have an emotional element, and I feel like that is something important you need in a Spider-Man entry. So honestly, with that mystery aside now, and we know who the director is, and I think I'm very happy with it, and I think other people will be too, 
there's still so many unanswered questions to what is happening with Spider-Man 4. We are hearing the back and forth reports that it's not going to be a grounded street level story. There's not going to be a Kingpin and a Daredevil team up like we were maybe hoping and anticipating for that they might lean towards the multiverse. Whether that could mean Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield coming back in. I mean, even Andrew Garfield has been making some comments lately. Where during a recent interview, he was asked if he would be returning for Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4. And he said, the internet is a big place. I think there's a lot of people who will just say anything to get clicks so you might have been duped i'm afraid and look i realize that andrew garfield went on a whole interview tour where he was just denying being part of no way home only to show up in the movie but there is a part of me that actually believes him this time. There actually isn't a plan for him and Tobey Maguire to be back in Spider-Man 4. Maybe Secret Wars. I do see it happening for Secret Wars. But Spider-Man 4, I don't think they're just yet. There's a real thought in my mind that if they go the multiverse route, it will be Sony finally fulfilling that whole Venom The Last Dance arc where they'll keep their promise of putting Venom and Spider-Man in a movie together to do who knows what. I also think this is so interesting that it coincides with Tom Holland's recent secret meeting meeting or secret shoot day. Last week, Tom Holland posted on his Instagram that he was secretly going to film something. Then the next day, he was caught by fans going into the offices of Amy Pascal, the person who produces all the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. And now we're finally getting the director like, things are moving, man. Like, even in the article of this announcement, they flat out say, sources say that Spider-Man 4 is running, not crawling, full steam ahead, and will shoot early next year. By this time, February, January, we will be getting set photos, actual details, casting rumors. Oh, it is going to be Spider-Man mania again, and we'll get a clear idea of what's going on in this film. And dude, who doesn't miss the Spider-Man No Way Home hype days? I know I do. The only other semi-confirmed thing through these reports is that Deadline was saying that they are trying to negotiate for both Tom Holland and Zendaya. Now, we know Tom is obviously going to get the deal he needs. It's just a matter of how much money the boy deserves but it's looking more and more likely like Zendaya is going to be a person that returns back and you know I thought maybe it's a little too soon but she's just arguably such a big giant star in draw you'd be dumb not to include her in your movie I just don't know how you go about reversing that spell in a way that doesn't undo some of that emotional impact from No Way Home like I know it's gonna happen either way but it's like how will they go about making that happen? All I can say is Spider-Man's coming back in our lives, filming early next year, meaning probably a release day of 2026. I think things are going good for us Spidey fans. Good director's choice. Uh, let's just wait now on the villain and the story route Sony decides to go on. Heck, maybe when Venom The Last Dance comes out and if that has a post credit scene with Tom Holland, We'll now know the bigger idea of what they're trying to do. I mean, literally just today, Tom Hardy posted that they are again doing more reshoots for Venom The Last Dance. Now with this Spider-Man stuff, I'm like, mmm. I don't know if it's a coincidence. But I leave it up to you guys. Uh, you leave me your opinions. Are you happy? Are you not? Let me know down below and uh... Green screen me, baby.